Hi, Lee. Is the statement somewhere or not really? Not we for the, not to be on the other. The artists are going to be here so we can talk to them directly. She's just going to run through it once and then I'll start talking. And get st we can get started then. So while these are running through, maybe just let me start off by welcoming all the NIU print students who've contributed this work. Um, I have to say, after we hung the show, we were really impressed with what you guys are doing. So, um, and we're really excited to have your work in the space. So. I hope that you can either as a, well, we're only letting five people in at once in the gallery, but I hope that you can, maybe groups of you can come down together and see it. Um, or maybe you can come in a van and then take turns coming in. I mean, I'm muted right now. Oh. What? Um, nothing, I'm sorry, Sherry. That's okay. Um, so there's also restaurants um, across the street, which there's a couple that are kind of good. And I think, I think Chicago's opening their restaurants again. So um, that might be something you guys could do. So. I think that's really a beautiful piece. I think all this work is really fantastic, actually. So let me talk a little bit about the gallery while we're doing these. Um, uh, my name is Sherry Reif Nacelli. I'm president of ARC at the moment, although um, there's a lot of other people that do a lot of work to keep the place open. We've, this is our 48th year and um, we are a women's cooperative that got started in 1973. And we were started because um, a group of artists got together. A lot of artists were graduating from NIU or from, um, they were graduating from NIU too, but uh, the Art Institute and U of I and other art schools in the area and there really weren't any galleries. What few galleries there were, they weren't interested in student work and they particularly were not not interested in women's work. So, um, so ARC along with Artemisia and um, another, uh, a few other galleries, uh, I think No Name was one of the galleries. Anyway, they, they started up these individual groups of artists and of, of artists run galleries that, and they would always have the same opening, the opening on the same night and everybody would uh, sort of meander from one space to the next. I think our first space was across from the museum, the original Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago in a building. Um, I don't, I was not a member then, so I don't know what floor we were on, but um, anyway, I think um, Artemisia was in the same building and um, I don't know if uh, Name Gallery was in the same building or not, but anyway. So we've been around a while and um, we have evolved, evolved and changed a little bit, but Pretty much uh, we're a group of women artists who are trying to run the space and give artists that are um, just graduating or professional artists that are not connected with a um, commercial gallery with anybody in the commercial gallery system. And we try to offer them a space to exhibit a professional space. And so, 
and we're still doing that. So if you're a woman and you're graduating and you're looking for a community to be part of, you might look into becoming a member. Um, we also show individual artists in the space. This particular month, um, we, um, this particular month, we had rented out all three spaces and that artist uh, wanted to reschedule. So we had this empty space and we asked her to help us. And um, uh, I think she and her husband found you guys. And so we're tickled to death to have your work in the space. So um, is Sasha here yet? Lee? I don't see her now. Okay, well, maybe she's not able to join us. She got an invitation, right? I believe so. Okay. So um, anyway, I, I would like for you guys to, you're welcome to talk about your work. We have a few members here. Um, this is really great. <laughs> this piece. Is Rachel here? Is Rachel Beer here? I don't believe so. Okay. Okay, well, we'll just move on. Um, so, um, Wes, is Wes Beeler here? Okay. Beeler, Beeler. Okay. <laughs> um, this is Sasha's piece. It's a really interesting piece. Um, this is a woodcut. Well, you guys, all the students know the piece probably. This is a woodcut, but it's then printed on. Pretty cool. So it's, it's like a Marco here. We have, I believe we have um, Jan here. Jan, these are lovely pieces. Do you want to talk about the work? I thought I saw her name. Yes, I am here. <laughs> um, so Jan, I, I noticed it says clay monoprint. So can you tell me how that works? Sure, I, I've been studying um, printmaking with Michael Barnes at NIU for a few years. And um, last year, I um, he assigned us a research project. We were supposed to uh, research a, a technique that we had never done before. And I came across this one. It was developed by an artist named Mitch Lyons in the late 1970s. And what I'll do, what I do is take a, a slab of clay and develop the image on the slab of clay using colored clay slip. And then uh, once I have the image where I want it, transfer that with just a wooden roller so it's a manual printing process. Um, right. Do different, different um, you can use different kinds of material. I, it doesn't, I did not have success with it on like a traditional paper. So the uh, thing I've been using primarily is called Reme and it is a, non-woven uh, polyester that's actually a filtration product. And uh, huh. so that, that's what they're printed on. And I've been able to do that since last February. I've been doing clay monoprints because I can do it at home. I have a studio set up in my basement where I can work with it, so. Right, so do you lay the, this uh, element, which would have been paper onto the clay then, and then roll the back of it? Yes, yes. Okay. And okay. then the image will lift up. And because Correct. the filtration material has a bit of an electrostatic charge, um, uh -huh. when Mitch Lyons first developed the process, um, he tried a lot of different materials. And he found this one worked really well because then the, the clay slip, the particles will adhere to, will, you know, at attach to this material and basically yeah. make it go. So. That's interesting. It's I had no idea it wasn't on paper when we hung them. You know, it was the, I could not, uh, I couldn't tell that. It's very, really, an interesting process. 
I really enjoy working with it. Yeah. So these are all, these slips then are all um, pretty much mineral based then, right? They're not pigment based. Well, some pigments are from, are from uh, minerals, but. Um, I'm using, um, I'm mixing the slip from a powdered slip. Uh, slip. Okay. And that's a white as white as I can get. And I'm using, um, there's certain kinds of pigment that you can use. So I'm using aqua um, pigment right. and I'm using some ceramic. Um, pigment, yeah. Um, some like some oxides. Right, um, right. I'm using tempera paint. Sometimes I can use tempera paint or even a writ powder dye. Um, there's certain, some things that you cannot use. You can't use anything that will dry quickly because it dries the clay. Um, but I'm using right. different, different things to mix the colors depending on you know what color I'm trying to get so so you must do you roll out the slab of clay first and then the slab of clay I've been working with since last February it's in a metal tray yeah um, and it it just stays there once it's in place you keep building with the slip on top of that slab and you keep building layers and layers and layers of slip. You don't ever take it off. And oh, okay. You can kind of start over with a new color, but what I really love about the process is um, that you get a lot of kind of really nice surprises and um, things yeah, that yeah. happen that you might not expect because as you're rolling, you're picking up slip that's below the top surface. And so you can get some really nice effects that way. Yes, yeah, so yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I, so it's a pretty um, spontaneous process. Yes. Yeah, that's interesting, really interesting. I think Michael's here. Hello, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Can I ask the a question? Labels. And we were laying the work out and sometimes they got separated, but those were obviously the same artists. So we put those together. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, so I did a series of works about um, my mental illness. This first piece here is about um, memory loss that I've had from depression. Um, yeah. yeah, I have, this figure looks somewhat like me and then I have it wandering through a desert. Yeah, interesting. This is really, you know, these, the imagery is just really powerful, I think. Um, Thank you. Now, did you have another piece? Yeah, this, this, this next one. one. Yeah. Oh, this, I love this piece. <laughs> yeah, I had, uh, this one was a reductive lithograph. Um, and this okay. one's more about like the guilt the, uh, that I have with depression and just like how it can be very like intrusive, even though if it's like something I shouldn't feel guilty about or I don't need to feel guilty about, it still like pops up. Right. Well, I, this is, I think this is a really powerful image. I really love this image. I have a question because I don't know that much about printmaking or lithography. What does reductive lithography mean? Um, so reductive is um, taking away from something that you put on the stone. So um, we put asphaltum on the stone and then um, scrape away with either like that, that cloudiness around the edges is from sandpaper. Um, but for oh. the details within the body, I just used a uh, razor blade, like from an X-Acto knife. Okay. Interesting. There's so there. first you layer, you lay down the, well, we used to use, um, shoot, it's been so long. We used to use like the crayon or um, the ink that you can use on a litho stone, which is oil-based. Um, so what did you say you lay down first? Did you? It's called asphaltum. Mm -hmm. Asphaltum, okay. I don't remember using that, but anyway. So then how do you get the different colors? So that you've, got, you've got two poles of colors then, right? Yes, I, um, so each layer you take away more from the stone. So you print 
each layer a different color. Um, and as you take away, it um, will leave that color shown in order to make the image. So it really is reductive. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you put the blue on? No, we knew the blue is in the ink. So <laughs> I'm trying to think backwards here. So um, yeah, so you do, you have to do two, two pulls of the print, right? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Do you have to, don't you have to do, so when I was in printmaking way back in the 60s, okay, I, you, if you had different colors in a litho, you had to do, you'd print one color and then you'd print the other color. Is that what you had to do here? Yeah, so you print, um, I think first I printed the blue and then it was the dark green and then the black on top of that. So you work uh, light to okay. dark. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Really interesting image. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. And they're both so different and have such a different quality. They are different. Yeah. Um, I don't think we hung these together, but, um, but they're, but I, I can see how they would go together. We have the, this piece on the uh, self-condemnation on the um, on a wall by itself, if I remember correctly, and I think the other one is on the stage. Anyway, thank you so much. These are quite beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for for being with us. So, is Nate Gilchrist here? I don't think so. Okay. These are interesting too. I. <laughs> it's a. I, the titles are really, uh, are yeah, fun. Is Christina here? I don't think so. Okay. This is also, go back one, Lee, if you don't mind. Um, well, those of you in the class may know this piece, but she has stitching around that really fine line that the, that the figure fits in um, is this red thread that goes all the way around so that each figure is kind of boxed in um, in this form, but the figures obviously are kind of rotating and moving around in different directions. So it's a really interesting piece. Um, and then this other one, there's arrows there's these lines that go around. So it kind of looks like, remember when I was in grad school, someone was, um, a lot of students who, when they came to Chicago from out of town, uh, would trace their steps uh, of a, during a day, you know, their movements around the city uh, within a day or a week or a month or whatever. I anyway, mean, that's kind of what this reminds me of. It looks like we're looking into buildings and mm -hmm. yeah, it's you know, like a visual roadmap of where, um, mm -hmm. where to go. Not anyway. to, oh, sorry, not to speak for Christina, but I know a lot of Christina's work talks a lot about um, kind of unfolding and looking within uh, herself, her community, her environment and, and instruction manuals. So this idea of, um, where to go, what to do, what to find next. Um, yeah. and I know a lot of these figures are, are small self-portraits. And so it's, uh -huh. it's kind of this idea of like finding, finding herself uh, within herself and uh, you know, what, what is an okay space to occupy or some of the thoughts she's thinking about just from hearing her speak about this work. Right, well, thank you, Zoe, that's great. That's helpful, you know, since she's <laughs> not here. So I yeah, no, any of you are allowed to speak up. You don't have to be. This isn't a classroom you have to be called on. <laughs> Just I'm blur it out if you want to talk. Right Hi, Randy. Nick is, oh, did you want to say something, Randy? Yes, I'm at the gallery right now and the, the piece before this one with the figures. Yeah. It, um, it's hanging up uh, upside down from what we see right here. Oh, it is? Oh, okay, yeah. well, and that's I'll turn that around. Yeah. Because I think this way is correct because that's how she mounted it to hang. 
Right, right. The upside, it, it, so it's upside down in this image, you mean? Right. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. how I got it, but I will flip it. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks, Randy. Well, Nick is here, I believe. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, so this piece is kind of like one in a, a set. Uh, pretty much it's kind of like kind of talking about my time during quarantine stuff like that so this one's just kind of like me and my two other roommates uh that's actually in the middle that's christina kang and zoe kuvion on the right side <laughs> and so you know uh, life has changed quite a bit so there's no more going out like going out to the bar or anything like that so here we're just kind of like sipping hot cocoa and i have a soda in my hand and we all um it's kind of like finding similar interests so we're all drawing we all have our sketchbooks and pencils out so fun fun small stuff to do you know you don't have to do big things but you know, little things is still just as fun. That's great. Yeah, yeah this is the, the other people from the show are in it. <laughs> yeah, and so the other two is kind of like how my life's kind of changed. So this one's no more late shop nights. So I used to spend uh, like, you know, the majority of probably like a good like we like four to like eight, twelve hours at the school. And not anymore. Yeah. It's a lot of working from home since you know they're trying to cut down on human interaction. So here's an empty shop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So the details fading out are towards the edges. So it's like the memory's fading and forgetting what it looks like. So this is a lino cut. These are both all three lino cuts, right? Yeah. So it's pretty much just a stamp, like a giant stamp. Yeah. yeah. It, that's a pretty detailed stamp for <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this one, uh, pretty much this is like my room set up. Uh, pretty much yeah. now I'm just working from home. Yeah, but well, this is, these are fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> great. I think my favorite Easter egg from this piece, can I, can I say it, Nick, or will you? Sure. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the, the prints, the latter two prints show up within one another. And so uh, the, not this one, but the next two um, on the press bed here is yeah. Oh, is, that's is, right. Is the other is the is thank the you, other Zoe. Print. And then in the <laughs> in his bedroom, and the other one is the press print. So <laughs> it's uh, it's very neat. He's he's good that's, at hiding little Easter eggs. Love it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Well, you know, when we're hanging the show, we're so focused on getting them laid out properly and then getting them on the wall properly and even and making sure they're all the right height and you know getting them all hung in it with a decent decent distance behind between them and um <clears throat> and trying to get everything to flow nicely and you know we need to stop and look at these carefully that is just great that's a, that's great I love stuff like that, little surprises. That's wonderful, Nick. Thank you. Okay. Is this, is Sixing here? No? I think so. This is a very large print and wow, it is so detailed and delicate and wonderful. And, um, if anyone knows anything about the imagery, I'd be interested to hear. Um, it's just, it's this wonderful, elaborate, highly detailed um, print imagery that's really great. So. So Singh just has this, oh, sorry, I didn't mean oh, to. He just has no. a wonderful, like, personal narrative going um, that throughout our, our journey in grad school, he's been building and writing and uh, delving into. And so he's kind of exploring um, this idea of, of humanity and truth um, and where we find our gods and idols um, and, and how we explore those as we move forward in history. And so it's, uh, this piece, like she's saying, is just enormous. And uh, it was a real... A journey for us to watch him you know make it it's, it's an engraving and so he used yeah. a, copper, a copper plate um yeah. a giant copper plate that takes up the whole table uh yeah. to, to engrave into and then just watching him ink it you know he'll ask us he's like i'm gonna print this tomorrow like are a couple of you gonna be in the shop so it takes him hours to fill the whole thing with ink and then 
uh, more time, you know, to lay it out on the press and uh, even run it through the press. He has like three of us helping. So just to give you an idea, it's, it is super elaborate. Um, props to him for being able to get this one uh, even together and done in one big piece. Yeah, it's, it's one large sheet of paper. <laughs> <laughs> but it is magnificent. I mean, thank you, Zoe. I really appreciate you jumping in when, you know, there's no one there, the person isn't here because you guys know more about the work and we'd like to know more about the work. So that the other reason for us to know more about the work is so that uh, when people come in, we can talk to visitors about it and, and have some insight other than just our own perceptions, which, um, which are not wrong necessarily, but it's nice to know what the artist is thinking. What you were talking about, Zoe, with that last piece, that makes perfect sense. And it really, um, it really speaks to that kind of thought process and that searching and yeah. So I, always love, I feel like I can find a new something every time I look at it because it's so big, but because it's also so detailed and he, yeah, uh, I'll look at it and there'll be a whole new face that I haven't explored before or expression or just a little twisted up body in a corner or something. So he's, you know, it's very belabored. It's, <laughs> um, well, it's really yeah, th yeah, that's very evident. I mean, you know, but no, thank you. I mean, I, I agree now, next time I'm in the gallery, I'm gonna look at it really closely. Cause like I said, we get it up on the wall and then we're all pooped and we go home, you know? <laughs> so. Absolutely. What? No, absolutely. I can understand that. <laughs> yeah. Just hanging that one's hard enough. We've helped him hang that one a couple of times and it yeah. takes some time to get it up there on the wall with magnets. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it does. Uh, so is Saf Saffron's uh, Yes, she's I'm here. Yep. Oh, here. I also okay. wanted to say about Sishing's piece, um, that figure at the top, I think he made a, like a, he sculpted oh. and then cast in bronze, uh, oh. that figure. This, this piece? Yeah, he has like, oh, wow. Bronze he's piece. Made, he's made like an, he's made idols of it. The, the narrative kind of moves throughout his different work. So he's, he's right. got like other pieces that involve these same goddesses and figures. And it's, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Saffron. Lots of yeah, it's like, a, it weighs like five pounds. It's super heavy. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, that's, we, that's amazing. It'd be interesting to see the other work. So Saffron, tell us about this. So this is a, uh, I love the cake idea. <laughs> yeah, I was just, that entire semester was like the first truly, truly online semester. I wasn't happy with my work. So, and like the direction. So yeah. I just kind of stepped back and instead of trying to make these elaborate scenes or characters I was trying to make, I just made a cake because I felt like a loser. I was kind of owning <laughs> to it. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, you gotta let go of that part because we all feel that way most of the time, <laughs> or a lot of us do. <laughs> but I thought, um, it, was I thought it was a political motive. Yeah, me too. I thought it had political connotation. No, just me feeling <laughs> like a like a and loser then, again. Yeah, it would tell us about this one. This is really this is really so. Lovely. The meaning behind this one was more like, I think that America is still very puritanical and very repressed. And yeah. I, I remember someone wording it as like, it's not evil to want to enjoy life. Right. And that really struck me because like, you know, people don't, enjoying yourself and having fun and being okay with that is kind of seen as a, a weird, taboo thing so this was yeah. more of a piece idolizing and as an idol to hedonism yeah. I think yeah healthy I think it's you'll live a better yeah. life if you're like not right. hating them. yeah yeah <laughs> this is good that's great thank you mm -hmm. now Zoe I have to say I love these these two pieces, these, these are lithographs. Oh, gracious, thank you. <laughs> I love this one. Yeah. 
thank you. And it, believe it or not, it's um, when taken out of the frame, they are the same piece, um, but one is the front and one is the back. And so oh. it is, it's, it's the same, uh, you know, obviously yes. there's, I, I framed two of them, but uh, within the print edition, they're, they're the same. So all of them have um the the brush and the cicada on one side and then the hair and the uh shell on the other and so um I think a lot of a lot of my work and then it's it's hard to see and I was um hoping maybe the lighting in the gallery would that's there's no glass in the frames for these because uh the prints are all embossed oh thanks Gretchen um right. the prints are <laughs> the prints are embossed <clears throat> and so uh it within the brush, the brush itself is embossed, the cicada is embossed on each side, everything that's in it is embossed. And so you can see I kind of that. the brush yep. coming in. Um, yep. And I think a lot of my work here recently has been um, surrounding the ideas of uh, absence and, and togetherness and what happens, you know, to, to our belongings and how much of us, uh, whenever we're not there, and then how much of us do we leave behind in the things that we leave uh, when, we're, when we're not there. And so it's thinking about um, if two people share a hairbrush, you know, how, how much of them is combined in the hair that's collected in that brush. Yeah, um, yeah. And I'm thinking about the metaphor of uh, cicadas and how uh, a lot of the time, you know, me growing up, I'm from Louisiana and uh, there, there'd be, and cicadas, you know, show themselves all over the United States. Um, right, but I remember as a those, kid, yeah. Right, you'd find those little brown shells and, you know, you're hearing the live cicadas around you, but I feel like so often we see and we find and we hold those shells that are just, you know, the what's left behind the discard, the refuse almost uh, of those cicadas themselves. They're no longer important to them when at one point that was, that was the shape of their whole body. And so I've been thinking about what we, what, what it is that we leave behind and how much of us that was at one point and uh, kind of the, the poem that that is um, and, and how much of our art that we leave behind and uh, if that's right. sort of a shell. So it's been kind of neat. It's, it's like finding metaphor within metaphor and um, using embossment kind of as a, a literal metaphor in my piece for absence. So, you know, on one, you can't look at both sides of the print at the same time. Um, you have to look from one to the other, uh, what's missing in A, then what's missing in B. So it's, it's been kind of neat uh, to explore that and make these pieces. I'm thinking of making new iterations of these where I, um, I print the background in like a cream so that uh, it kind of brings out what's left blank and embossed. But it is uh -huh. interesting to only have the light be what brings that out. So I'm, I'm excited that y'all were able to have this piece up. Thank y'all for showing it. Yeah, no, it's, I think it's just great. I, I, I didn't realize, I saw the embossed, you know, when I hung it. Right. But I didn't realize that the back was, the, that that was one piece, back right. and front. Absolutely. It's, it's kind of neat. This was the first piece that I'd made um, embossed like that and using uh, impression as a literal metaphor for what we leave as for impressions. So um, this one is not double sided. Um, it was the first one I'd made like it. And I had just been struck by uh, I was driving back actually from Louisiana to Illinois and to DeKalb and uh, it was over the summer. And I passed this gas station that was just absolutely, you know, abandoned and all of the gas station, you know, facets of it had been removed. There were no longer any pumps or anything. The, the windows yeah. had kind of been shattered and there was a mimosa tree growing out of the middle of the storefront. Um, <laughs> and I, I realized as I passed it by, you know, I was, I kind of it caught my vision and I was super inspired and I said, oh, I need to turn around. Like I need to, I was, I was maybe 15 minutes away from it and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I was like, I have to turn around and I have to go look at it. It'll set me back in my trip, but I'm going to go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know that feeling that's happened to me before. <laughs> that's, this is, it's lovely. It's just lovely. Then you have all these, the boss plant materials. It looks like around the outside. It's great. Really lovely. Is Gregory here? I don't think so. These two pieces, um, yeah, there's the other one. Again, I think these are so, so these etchings are just so lovely. The other one isn't. Isn't it? This was a lithograph, yeah. 
Although it looks like it could be an etching, but anyway. This um, one's a reductive <laughs> lithograph. What? This one's a reductive lithograph. Oh, this is a reductive, is that Gregory? No, no I'm, I'm Mikey, okay. I was just letting you, you know. You just know, oh, thank you. Okay, I'm <laughs> sorry, Mikey, okay. Um, also, he does have a third piece that is somewhere else in the gallery. I, I realized that when I was putting the labels up. Yeah, Lee, do you do you know that one? No, we did not get his images till late. And uh, so I didn't know there was one more to ask for. All right, let me look. Wait. Jaden is here, though, I believe. We can come back to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is Jaden here? Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. There we can. Yeah. All right. Howdy. Uh, most Hi. of my work revolves around sort of uh, Americana and ideas of masculinity within that. So like uh -huh. in the American lexicon of like cowboys and bikers and uh, like the ideas of like a, a mat machismo and how yeah. uh, we like navigate through spaces with certain lenses and the version of yourself that you show to different people is different with different groups or either like friends or family or whatever right right um, so there's like almost like tailor fit personalities for you to fit into and trying to sort of suss out like which one of those is you or if all of them are you or sort of that yeah. idea um yeah. these two were half lino cut half uh letterpress which Nick actually helped me out a lot with the letterpress portion. I used his type, so. Um, but they are, um, one's from an old folk song, the, the Texas lyrics from an old folk song. And another one is um, the motorcycle one I made up because it's about of, there was a, a Hell's Angel in the 70s that was buried like in riding position on right, his motorcycle, right. like in concrete, which I right. thought was like a hilarious and outlandish yeah. idea. It's sort of like yeah. even like a last, like, uh, yeah. way to show who you are um so it's like so what sort, you love sort of, the most right yeah <laughs> yeah and sort of that and the title relating to the first hell's angel chapter was in Purdue California and then the third one is uh, more so personal about me and my like uh ideas of like who I am specifically and like the a lot of the I did a um a series of larger drawings that were um these skulls with they're like sort of ambiguous between masks and not masks. It's like sort yeah. of like, is it truly the being or is it a, a facsimile of that? Right. Um, so like this one being like the hiding behind the mask, but also the mask is like part of you, I guess, falls into that. And the Western imagery yeah. is about like um, DeKalb. I live in DeKalb, Illinois. And it, the creation of barbed wire is also the, the death of the cowboy um, because they don't, uh, cowboys kind of, Open range, right. It restricted yeah, as the they open range, to right. Use right. fences. There's less cowboys. So like the place I live is kind of like the death of like a piece of culture that I'm interested in and make work around. So like sort of like that playing with that. Um and just the childhood like boy bedroom, like astronauts and yeah. race cars and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you. These are great. Uh, I think these are really interesting. It's it, and you know I'm so impressed with, of course I, you know this is what you do when you're in grad school right? or when when you're in college. But so impressed with how um, introspective and um, um, thoughtful you all are about your work and how you create it. I think that's wonderful. You know, it's really really magnificent. <laughs> <clears throat> so you guys should consider showing with us again sometime. Um, did we go through everyone? Lee, have we been through all the images? Yeah, that was everything that I had. Well, you guys, I thought, I think you, this is a fantastic show. I hope you can either, as a group, how many are, of you are there total? Do we know? I know there were 30 images, I believe. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello. 14 of you? Yes, hi. 
Hi. What about Greg Paget? Did you do his stuff already? Yep. You did. I missed it. I'm his mom. Could well, you... we can go back to it, mom. Okay. Can you show it? Um, can you show it? We're looking for it. Here it is. Thanks. <clears throat> I know Greg had talked for a little bit with me with this piece. This is also reductive, um, like Mikey's piece was. Yeah. And uh, so it, you know, that asphaltum layer is put down um, and it's greased into the stone and then it's, it's reduced. And so Greg, you know, Greg's style of drawing and uh, reduction is so careful. Again, kind of like we were talking about Sassings, it's just painstaking and very careful, but I think he really was able to achieve a luminous quality to this piece. You know, you can almost feel the lights um, when you're there in person with it. Um, and so it was just really neat to watch him work through this. And I remember asking him as he was, I was like, Greg, you know, do, what is this piece about? What is this, you know, um, speaking to? And he was talking a little bit about, he said at the moment, he and his wife um, were kind of in, at, he, he wasn't physically near her. I don't remember why the reason was, but he uh, he had to be physically away from her for a period of time. Um, and he was like, you know, what was keeping us together was the music we love to listen to. He's like, we could talk about um, what we were hearing. And he's like, and I could keep her in my mind in that way. And so it's, it's kind of this idea of him and her and still togetherness. Um, and I love how much nearer she was in her reflection. Uh, and so it was just, it was really neat hearing him speak to that, speak about this piece and, and hear that from him. Um, and see, this was, I think, one of his first reductive lithographs. So he was able to like master it in no time. Whoa. I was really, imp I was really impressed with Greg's ability and with his, uh, just, I don't know, the insightfulness that went into all the thought that went into this piece. So I was, I was super glad that he put it in. Oh yeah. What was his other piece? Is his other, he has another piece, right? I think so, but I know that Greg was in my same boat where our images didn't get up, like the, the pieces got sent to the gallery, but the images didn't get uploaded until a little later. So I don't know if y'all have well, the Well, that was it's one that I just made the label for. So yeah, it should okay. be. It's the glass, it's a man holding the glass. Hang on, something man. happened to my Zoom. Hang on. Oh, okay. Uh-oh, we lost our master here. <laughs> All right, can you see it now? I don't know. Hey, we're back in business. Oh, yeah, sorry, you guys. Something just went. I clicked on something and everything disappeared. <laughs> no worries. It never happened before. Okay, so this is Jaden. I. Who is yeah, the? We have, there we go. Just there, just there it is. The, the, yeah, the the bird in the goblet. This one's yeah. a totally different method too. This is you know. Um, while well, just as painstaking, I think this one is an, is an etching. And so instead of being on a stone, uh, this one's, you know, on a, on a copper plate. And so I really think it speaks to his versatility too. He's able to still get all of that beautiful softness. Yeah. But there's, it's not even on a stone. So he made this before I was even in, in the program. So this was a year before I came to, uh, NIU. So it's really neat to see how he's grown since, since this piece and how the two pieces work with each other, even so. Yeah, yeah, great, Zoe. I mean, that's that's they're yeah. both lovely. Yeah, I mean, they're just um, Thank you. they're so beautifully done. And when I saw that this was a lithograph, I could hardly believe it. Just it's just so beautifully done. So yeah. Thank you. Is there anyone who didn't get a chance to speak about their work who? Um, who is has joined us? I was about to say, I Sasha, Sasha's did in I now. see you here? Yes, I'm here. Um, we we saw your piece. Let's can we go back to that, Lee? Yeah. There we go. Yeah, Sasha, so, do you want to talk about your work? Sure, I can say a couple things. Uh, so I was investigating sort of uh, working a little bit more sculpturally at this point and uh, I didn't initially decide to I was going to print this as a standard woodcut but I loved the way that th it looked on the wall so much as an object that I decided to uh, display it this way and then have that third tone of the the watercolor in there. Um, yeah. 
at this point, I was really like exploring uh, objectivity and how objects can be connected to places and how they can um, sort of be like your anchor to a place, especially for me at yeah. the time, I was sort of thinking about how uh, sometimes objects can be um, the important the important parts of yourself that you leave behind in places and when you have to you know go to a new place or move on and sometimes you have like an object that really reminds you of who you were in the past or how that you grew as a person in that place and yeah um, this piece was sort of about um thinking specifically about how when you're in certain places that are um that offer security like your uh where you grew up and how those places are good for you and um, they feel really good, but they don't often foster growth in who you are. And then yeah. thinking about the contrast of new places that are often um, more challenging and sometimes really uncomfortable and uh, how they foster growth and change who you are and become a big part of who you will become. So that was yeah. kind of like the contrast between the two worlds here in this place. And it was all sort of wrapped into this object that uh the wood was in the shape of yeah was this piece of wood a, a found object or was it did you carve it yeah so the the uh shape of the block yeah was a small found object that i found in the desert so it's about three inches long and uh i did the wood cut based on that piece of wood and then i added the imagery within it so this is about five feet tall and right. um, it's based on a three inch, very small object that I've enlarged. Oh, wow. Well, it's, it, you know, it's, it's really a um, powerful piece. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone else who is Wes here? Is Wes able to join us? I don't think about, he is here. I think he um, is. Is Rachel here? No, I think that's it. Okay. I just want to well, say I'm at the gallery today, and somebody stopped in who knows Sasha and went to Northern. His name's Brandon. Oh, yeah, uh, I definitely know Brandon. He graduated here about three or four years ago. Right. Yeah, I that's awesome that he stopped by. Yeah, he knew you before you were a, a faculty member. And, that's awesome. And he said that he was going to another show at Western. And that was also a Northern uh, person or work. And, yeah, uh, Jeffrey Todd Smith has a, a show there right now. So any of you who want to come see this work in person, and then you can also go to Jeffrey's show. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys since you know him or some of you. Yeah. Well, um, I want to thank you all for participating in this. You've, you've You've managed to put a fantastic show up in our space, which is what we're always looking for. Um, I wanna reiterate that we do show individual artists. Right now we're doing group shows that are in two spaces and um, we have an individual artist in the third space. And the way the gallery works is for those of you who are artists and may be interested in having a show is <clears throat> we jury the work in and um, we invite you to, to have a, a show. You have to apply and we, we look at the work and then we either accept um, or don't accept the work. We, um, but um, if you're accepted, if your work is accepted then um, we subsidize the, sp the cost of the space with you. So each space costs us um, $1,500. So we ask the artist to pay half of that um, so we can pay our rent. But if you sell any work, we do not um, take a commission. In fact, if someone's interested in buying a piece, we put, um, we put the viewer in touch 
with the artist and you work out a deal. We do ask that if someone wants to buy a piece in the show that they keep it in the show until the end of the show so that we don't have a big blank spot in our walls for the rest of the month. Um, our juried shows that we're doing run for two months for the at the at the moment. Um, this allows us to have less time that we're contaminating each other and putting ourselves at risk to hang the shows and organize them. Um, but each month, the, that third space is, um, gets a new artist. So we, we have spaces throughout. I have 2021 filled now, um, and I'm beginning, I'll start working on 20. 22 shortly. Um, got a couple calls for jury shows I've got to finish up and then we'll be where I'll be working on 2022. So um, also if you're might be interested in becoming a member, you can go on our website and um, read about becoming a member. Again, you have to be juried in and unfortunately you have to be a woman. So um, uh, that's kind of the bylaws of our organization. And it, um, we were founded at a time when um, women were not getting any credit or recognition. And so we show men's work, but it, we want to keep a feminist perspective on what we do show. Um, but our goal is primarily showing really excellent work. And thanks to all of you, we have been successful in that goal this month. So I appreciate Sherry. you um, participating. Yes. Sherry, can you talk about the jury shows coming up? Sure, There's the, the jury shows um, that we have coming up are is Mother, um, or uh, I'm sorry, Observing Motherhood. That, that deadline is coming up rather quickly. Um, we're looking for um, all iterations of motherhood, um, whether you are an observer of motherhood or whether you are experience, have experienced motherhood and all other intellectual or literal representations of that um, connection or experience. Um, um, or watching that experience. So, um, so don't, um, or however you feel towards that whole idea. So whether, whatever that is, um, we want it to be open to all, um, to everyone, men, um, everyone of sexual preference and, um, and get some really have again have a really interesting perspective on that um, role that a lot of women choose to have. So, um, and all of us experience it through our mothers. So, um, please look on the website for the application for that. I know the deadline is coming up quickly. So, um, if you're interested in applying for that, you should check check it out soon. The next one that I'm working I on. I think right the now, deadline, is, Sherry, the deadline is March 21st, I believe. Okay, so we have some time, yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah. So thank you, Iris. Um, so the other, the next show we're going to have be having is our planet ourselves, and uh, that's going to be juried by uh, Jane Stevens, who was the former director of um, the Illinois State Museum that was in Chicago at the Thompson Center. Um, I think it's on Randolph Street. And um, that should be an interesting show as well. Um, then we have a third show coming up in the fall, which we haven't decided on a topic yet. So um, stay tuned for that one. That'll be in November and December, I believe. So. I want to thank all of you. Does anybody have any questions for us as gallery members or uh, questions about how the, the organization works? Zoe, are you? Yeah. 
we're not getting and we're not understanding we can't hear you so coming to view the pieces in person it's five person maximum um oh yeah yeah sorry it's asking if it's um it's a five person maximum for coming to visit mm -hmm. yes oh. uh -oh. um, i i actually <laughs> can you hear me okay now or not not so much Are, is this Better. zoe i'll type in the chat hold up yeah. That's okay. That was Zoe. Zoe, you sounded like a like your computer computer was turning into a robot or something. Oh, Are she the regulations the changing? Are the regulations changing in Chicago right now? They I are not... actually. We we yeah. probably could we could relax this. I think because because uh, restaurants are opening with you know they're allowed to have fifty percent participation. So I think we could safely change them. We should talk about that. Yeah, I think if you guys come in together, you could probably be in there at once, but you do still need to wear masks. I think we ought to keep that mask um, because there are different levels of, uh, there's these different factions of the um, um, COVID, of the virus that's, that's evolving, it's mutations. So, um, so yeah, but our, our hours are, we're only open right now on the weekends and that's Friday from um, three to seven, Saturday noon to four and Sunday noon to four. So um, if you can get a group together and come in, as long as you kind of stay spread out and stay away from the gallery sitter, I think that'd be fine. So, um, are there any other questions? Did that, did I answer your question, Zoe? Maybe she lost her. Sure, oh. are your- uh, uh, Yes, hours... I answered that. I saw, I just saw the chat, okay. <laughs> are your hours on the website as well? Yes, they are. Okay, awesome, thank you. Yeah. So are there any other questions? I'm sitting tomorrow and looking forward to seeing all these in person. Oh, they're great. I mean, you're going to be so tickled, Lee. I, they're really, it's a really a lovely show. And I want to thank you again, all the Northern students for pulling this off, helping us pull it off. So and thank you guys well, so much for all your work as well. Thank you so much for hanging the show. We really appreciate that. Well, that's, that's okay. We were, we were glad to do it. It was really fun. It was, it was relatively easy because everything was brought at once and we, it was easy to unpack. You, you just put protective wrapping on it that was pretty simple to take apart and put back. It'll be easy to put back together again. So um, thank you so much for sharing your wonderful work with us. We're just tickled pink to have it in the space. So thanks everyone. Yeah, and if you get a chance to come in, I hope, we get to see you. So that would be great. Have a great rest of your weekend, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>